amazing what all we're going through. I think that for a while we've said we wanted the church to, you know, get out of the building, and we are out of the building, and we are in the community. And thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Hey, church, we miss you guys so much, and we pray for the church every day. But we cannot wait to actually be with you physically again. We miss you terribly. Terribly. Hi, church. <laughs> we wish you well, and thank you for being His church. It's good to be in His church with you. on you, church. Uh, I miss being with you. And Joanne. Yes, we love our church. We are so glad and thankful that you come on on Sunday, and we feel like we can be with each one of us, and hope this will all end soon in a big way. Greetings. Church, we love you. Nancy, good to see you. Good to see, see you. you. Yeah. <laughs> well, greetings, Christ Community Church. We have missed you greatly. And we love you, people. We're still going to look forward to that day we're back together. We love you all so much. Greetings, Crash Community Church, Montreat. Hope everyone's doing well and uh, enjoying this nice weather and getting outside. Uh, the Cedos uh, miss you and love everyone and look forward to us all uh, being together again and uh, sharing the faith uh, eye to eye. You're here. And who's this whippersnapper? Say hey. Hello. Hello, church. We miss you very much. We're so glad to be able to say hello to you and uh, the Lord bless you. We just love you and miss you very much. Oh, oh we, we miss you all. We miss every Sunday. We miss the choir. We miss the music. We miss seeing everybody. But we'll be back. Yes, I agree. We miss seeing everybody. God is good, and we will see everyone soon. Thank you for preaching, Richard. We love you. Hello, church. We love you, and we miss you. Please come back home. Yes, all right. And home is where your heart is, and that's where our heart is with you. We love you guys. Greetings, Christ Community Church. We miss you so much. We do. Christ Community Church, and welcome to worship. This morning as we gather, as we gather in places all throughout the world to worship the King, we are unified with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Think about that. In Africa, in China, in Korea, South Korea, North Korea, all over the world, um, we are united as brothers and sisters in Christ. So in solidarity, we gather to praise and magnify and glorify the name of the Lord. This morning, we're reminded from Romans 15, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. So I hope this morning that you'll take some time, maybe after the service, even maybe during the service, that you would, as the Lord maybe prompts your heart to call them up and welcome them for Christ has welcomed you. So as we enter into worship, let us just be still before the Lord and go to him in prayer this morning. Let us pray as Sandra leads us in prayer this morning.
Our Heavenly Father, we invite your presence to be known among your people this morning. As one church, one body, we offer you the praise due your name. We stand before you a forgiven people in Christ, a chosen people in Christ, a people with a hope and a future in Christ, eager for your Holy Spirit to work new grace in us for today. Be glorified, we pray. Amen. The psalmist says, from the rising of the sun to the sun goes down, let the name of the Lord be praised. So I invite you, where you are, uh, maybe you need to stand this morning as we gather and as we are called to worship from Psalm 34. Hear these words and let's respond as they show on the screen this morning. I will bless the Lord at all all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my, my soul, soul makes its, its boast in the lord, lord. let the, the humble, humble hear it and, and be glad. glad oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together i, I sought the lord and he answered, answered me and, and delivered, delivered me, me from, from all my fears. fears. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. The, the poor, poor man cried, and the, and the Lord, Lord heard him, and, and saved him out of all his troubles. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Let us praise him this morning. All creation cries to the Lord of lords, our King Jesus. Let us worship him and pour out our hearts before him. We stand before him forgiven. We are people redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we will sing. Bless his name this morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. join our voices together in prayer as we pray the prayer that our Savior has given us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. To God be the glory. Let's declare it this morning. What he has done for us through Jesus Christ, his son. Sing with me. Let's go. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So loved he the
things he has taught us. Great things he has taught us. Great things he has done. And great rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. For come to the Father through Jesus the Son. that is worth celebrating this morning great things that our God has done and is still doing this morning as we worship we wait on him for he is our king and he is our home we say come and stand before your maker full of wonder full of fear come behold his power and glory yet with confidence strong near for the with a Hallelujah. We rejoice in our King this morning. Give him praise. Just give him praise where you are. Give him praise.
from my mom because she is real nice and she's my friend and she lets me watch shows. Thank God for my mom because she's kind. I thank God for my mom because she's always supported me. I thank God because she made my mom so I can have our family and I can be in it. I thank God for my mom because she is patient and she cares for others and she loves other people well. I thank God um, for my mom because she takes care of me. Because she lets me have snacks anytime I want. She is extremely nice to me and she buys me expensive stuff that I really want. Because she loves me and whenever I need her, she's always there. I thank God for my mom because she's always thinking about others. Because she can go to the store with her mask on when the virus is here and give us more um, toys to play with. And also she can, we can love her and we can give her flowers that's why. Whether you know it or not, they really are. Indeed, this is Mother's Day, kids, and uh, you know what? This is a reminder to thank God for the gift of, of our mom, uh, stepmom, our grandmas, uh, those who are like mothers to us. And uh, it's also a reminder, you know, the Bible says that we're called to honor our mothers as well. And in fact, um, in Ephesians, it says, it's right, and so that it may go well with you, <laughs> and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Uh, indeed, you might wonder, uh, what does it look like to honor your mother? Well, you know, it means noticing all the things that they do for you, day in and day out, the things they're giving up just because they love you and because they care for you. It means thanking them daily, every day, for all that they've given you, the ways they're supporting you and the ways they cheer you on at games or concerts or in the things that you're doing. And it means learning how to listen. Oh, yeah. It means learning how to listen uh, when they tell you to do things, even when you don't feel like doing it, because you know what? They're, they're telling you that because they really do want what's best for you. Uh, and so I want to challenge you today to honor your mom today. Tell her and show her in a special way that you thank God for her, for the gift that she is to you, uh, and, and to let her know how much you appreciate all that she does because she loves you. Well, we're going to give thanks for mom and, as, uh, and all the moms that we have in our lives as we, as the priesthood of all believers, go before the Lord in prayer. So I invite you all to join me in prayer. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we do praise you. We glorify you and we rejoice. Because you are a God who has taken, who continues to take such good care of us. Not only did you take care of our sin. Not only did you take care of death on the cross and in the resurrection, Father, you continue to show that you take care of us as a loving parent does. We've not gone hungry. We're not without shelter. God, you have looked after us, and we give you thanks, particularly in this difficult time. But, Father, we do seek your face because we are ready for this difficult time to be over. We, we were weeks ago. But, Father, we look to you to the might of your hand. We look to you, the great physician, to be at work helping to bring about a cure for the coronavirus, God. We ask your hand would be superintending those who are working towards a vaccine, for those who are caring for the, the sick. And God, we ask that, uh, that your healing hand would wash through our land, through, through this world, that your spirit would bring about restoration and new life. And God, we do ask in, in the power of your name to bring about an answer, a cure to this disease. Father, we pray your spirit would be at work in all of our leaders, our, uh, from local to federal, Lord, in, in every way, God, as they seek to get our lives uh, and open this place back to work and life again. We ask your grace and wisdom over them as they do so with care and love, um, but with wholeness in mind. Father, we ask your spirit would be over our ministries that have been helping to meet the needs of food and shelter for uh, SVCM and Bounty and Soul and others who have been on the ground, God, uh, literally putting uh, food into people's hands 
And God, we give you thanks for the members of this church who continue to serve and to, to run and run errands uh, to meet the needs of our community as well. And ask your ongoing care and provision and support by the power of your spirit. And indeed, Father, we do praise you for mothers, for stepmothers, for birth mothers, God, for, for those mother figures in this church who have taken good care of us and have been a provision from you, God. We thank you for the ways that you have shown your grace to us through them, that you've shown sacrificial love to us through them. God, that you have, have blessed us in every way with a love that it come, could only come from, from a mother, God. We give you thanks for them. Father, we are mindful, though, also of, of women who want to be mothers but can't, who have miscarried or who are having to wait for some reason or another, who, are, who never got a chance and wanted to. God, we ask your spirit would be over them, comforting, blessing, and letting them know they are not forgotten, that they are beloved. And we ask again, just your mercy on these dear women, these saints. Father, we uh, are reminded, too, of, of this weekend of college graduations that aren't getting to happen, of, of senior years that have been robbed of, of these graduates, Father, and we ask an extra mercy on them as well. God, we give you thanks for the work that they've had to complete under difficult situations, but, but ask that you would continue to guide and direct them as they step into the next phase of life, a next phase that is indeed more complicated than it already was before. But God, we do ask that you would be at uh, work just letting them know that you have, as Scripture says, gifted them by the Spirit for the common good. Lord, reveal to them what they are called to give, to reveal your kingdom in this world, to be a part of what you have called them to do to make much of you. Father, may we be a church that makes much of you. May we be, continue to be about the business of making great the name of Jesus, of inviting the lost to be saved, inviting the hungry to be fed, inviting those who thirst for living water to find it in Jesus Christ. Lord, continue to bless and keep us, we pray, in the power of the Spirit and in the very strong name of Jesus. Amen. Well, as we move to the offering, it's, a, it's another opportunity, again, for me personally to just extend our gratitude to the ways that this church continues to step up. You know, we had a couple in our fellowship who had access to uh, surgical masks, offer to, to, get, to gift boxes, and we found out that those boxes of uh, masks were needed for our, uh, globe, our gospel outreach partners right here locally. So this church continues to do amazing things for the sake of Jesus Christ. Thank you for that. And just so you know, your offerings continue to support that ministry. Uh, as the need goes on, uh, your giving is going directly to help meet those needs. So thank you for those gifts. On the screen, you can see an opportunity to give. Um, uh, you can mail that in still. But however you choose to give this week, whether it's through a gift of money, through your time, through your prayers, may we do all to the glory of God. May we lay all of our lives before him as an offering this morning. There's a verse in Genesis 50, 20. This is the end of the story of Joseph, which I, I encourage you to read. And it says these words. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. The salvation of our God is on display as we trust in him even in times when we can't see forward. Lord Jesus, give us eyes of faith that we can see your hand working, your good purposes for us during these times. Beauty in our tears. 
Your plans are still to prosper. You've not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire and the flood. For you are faithful forever and perfect in love. You are sovereign over us. You are wisdom in a magic. Who could understand? Promises are my delight. Your plans are still the prosper. You've not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire and the flood. You are faithful forever and perfect in love. You are sound. Turn it for our good. Hear this promise. Receiving what the enemy means for evil. You turn it for our good. You turn it for our good. And for your glory. Receiving in the valley, you are faithful. You're working for our good. You're working for our good. And for your glory. Even what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for our good. You turn it for our good, for your glory. Receiving in the valley, you are faithful. You're working for our good. You're working for our good, for your glory. Your plans are still to prosper. You've not forgotten. You're with us in the fire and the flood. Yes, you are faithful forever and perfect in love. You are sovereign over us. Faithful forever. Faithful forever and perfect in love. You are sovereign. pray. Father, would you make these words that we have declared resonate inside of our hearts? We confess that we are a people who are filled with unbelief, and yet you come along a side of us and reveal yourself to us. And what can we do but to fall on our knees and to say that we trust in you? So, Father, we give you thanks for the way that you have extended your mercy onto us and over us and through us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Would you once again open our eyes that we might behold wonderful things in your Word? And, Father, would you reveal to us again your glory and your good purpose as we trust you. In you, O oh Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. 
In the blood of Jesus, we stand, and we stand a forgiven and whole and blameless in your sight. We love you, Jesus, and thank you for drawing us to the Father. Amen. Amen. Gravitational pull uh, is that force which draws uh, another object toward itself. Uh, and so, you know, the gravitational uh, pull of the earth, well, that's what keeps us firmly planted, our feet planted on, uh, on the ground. It's what keeps the moon in orbit around the earth. It's, it's what keeps your, uh, your coffee in the cup rather than floating around in the air. Uh, in our solar system, Jupiter is the planet uh, that has the most gravitational pull. Uh, its mass is more than twice the amount of all the other planets combined. And so Jupiter acts uh, uh, basically as a, uh, as a huge gravitational vacuum cleaner uh, that sucks comets and meteors into its orbit so that they don't hit us here on Earth. Well, you know, spiritually, um, what has the greatest gravitational pull on, on your life, uh, your, your affections, your thoughts, your energies? Peter, uh, as we jump back into our study in 1 Peter, uh, he speaks of two forces that have tremendous pull on our lives, fear and hope, fear and hope. Which of those are you really orbiting around these days? Well, let's consider this as we read uh, from 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter 3, beginning at verse 13. Here is the word of the Lord. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Well, Christians are uh, to be people who go around doing good. This is something that Peter has been uh, uh, emphasizing uh, ever since chapter, really chapter uh, 2. And uh, David Taylor touched on last time that indeed there's a calling on our lives to bless people. Now, this blessing others, this doing good, this, this is not a call to be nice people in some milk toast way. Um, our good works, in, in those works, we are to be fully mindful of putting God on display. See, we, we, we do our good works to show others, hey, this is what our God is like. We're, we're just reflecting his character, his compassion, uh, his grace in our good works. And so we, we do our good works. Uh, our motive ultimately is the glory of God. And Peter said this back in chapter 2, verse 12, so that others may see our good works and glorify God on the day he visits us or the return of Christ. Now, in doing good, uh, there's going to be a couple responses that we're going to uh, get from folks. And one of those responses will be, you know, people might say things like, hey, you Christians, you do a lot of really great things. Uh, you know, there's, there's good gossip that our good works produce. But at other times, we run into the buzz saw. Um, and this is what Peter begins addressing here uh, when he says in, in chapter 3, verse 13, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? Now, is, is he joking there with us? I mean, because there are plenty of people who gnash their teeth at Christians, especially uh, over what we stand for morally, biblically. Uh, I, know a, I know a really good man whose daughter has rejected him because of his stance uh, on marriage between a man and a woman, period. 
She compares him to a racist and declares him abusive simply because uh, he, he raised her with a biblical view of marriage. And she's so put out that she refuses to let him see her two children, his only grandchildren. Well, Peter's audience is beginning to be insulted um, and excluded from social circles because they follow Jesus. Some have lost jobs because uh, those in their trade guild uh, say, hey, you're bad for business because you're not worshiping the the gods of our trade guild. Well, Peter... um, he comes and he says, look, don't, don't fear. Don't, let, don't get sucked into the orbit of fear. And he states very boldly, verse 14, have no fear of them or be troubled. Now think about who is writing that. I mean, th- th- those words must have cost Peter something. You know, flash back 30 years to a courtyard when Jesus was, had just been arrested And there on the other side of that courtyard is Peter, and he's quivering in fear before a slave girl, denying that he even knew Jesus. See, the gravitational pull on Peter's heart then was fear of the the critical opinion of others. And boy, don't we all know that. I mean, we probably all have been in Peter's shoes where we, we fear others, and that drew us away from a bold stand for Jesus. Well, fear has a tremendous pull on us. And we're easily made uh, afraid. Uh, You know, God knows this, and that's why do not fear is one of the most common commands in the Bible. Something like over 100 times we're we're told to shake off fear. And it's not just fear of people. There's fear of persecution, but there's also fear of of disease and loneliness, loss. Uh, There's fear of death. And not fearing, uh, it doesn't mean we live this reckless kind of life. Uh, You know, there are things that we should be afraid of in a good sense, like poisonous snakes and spiders and, you know, foolishly exposing ourselves to diseases. But when God calls us not to fear people or illness, persecution, loss of income, loneliness, or even death itself, the question that comes back to us is, well, How do I break out of the gravitational pull of those fears? Because they're pretty powerful. Well, the way we break out of being drawn into uh, the, the orbit of fear, the gravitational pull of fear, is by being drawn into the greater gravitational pull of hope. Hope in Christ. As we uh, consider the pull of hope, I want uh, I want you to. Uh, in your mind, or maybe just where you are, uh, talk a little bit among yourselves, but, uh, but fill in the blank in this, this sentence. For me to live is blank, and to die is gain. Now, I know all you Bible scholars out there, you know the answer, it's Christ, it's always, it's always Christ in church, right? <laughs> uh, but what else could we put in that blank that would make that statement true? That what we, we sink our, our hopes into in this life carry us through death into the next life and there's gain for us. How about money? You know, for to me to live is money and to die is gain. Does that work? Well, no, it doesn't because when we die, we don't take our money with us. So money is not gain in death. Well, how about for me to live is is my family, or my job, or having a great body, or health, or people's opinion of me, or just having a great time in life. Do any of those work? Well, no, because they don't make sense when it comes to death, because all of those things fade away and change in death, and sometimes even before death, you know, like our bodies and the opinions of others, they can turn on a dime. The only thing that makes sense is Jesus. And this is why Paul writes in Philippians 1, 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And the reason this makes sense, complete sense, is that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. 
Death has no hold on him anymore, not even our death. He has the keys of, of death and Hades in his back pocket. And so Jesus can fill and satisfy us in this life and in the life to come. And so here then is, is the, the gravitational pull of biblical hope. It's this confidence in God that God has promised and he will do what he has said. Why? Because Jesus Christ lives. He's never going to die again. And who is there that can stop him from delivering on every promise of God? And the answer is there is no one. There's no one. Well, what, what has God promised us? You know, well, what's the, the content of, of this hope that we're, uh, we're banking on in Christ? Well, Peter, uh, throughout his, his letter, really has been telling us, uh, giving us glimpses of this, uh, of this promise that is ours. First um, Peter 1, uh, verse 3, uh, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Well, you can't say that about anything in this life. Perish, spoil, or fade. Everything does those things, but not our inheritance that's coming in Christ. Our hope is in a salvation that is ready to be revealed. It is like right at the door. Our hope is that we have a new name and a position in Jesus. Chapter 2, verse 9, we are chosen. We're a royal priesthood. We are, we are beloved treasures of God. Our future, it is not darkness. It is the marvelous light of God's presence for all eternity. Our hope is, chapter 3, verse 12, that we are not on our own. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers. I mean, God is fully attentive to us in this life and in the next. This means that, that our lives are held always in the grip of grace. This is our living hope. Well, we live in anxious times, don't we? And, you know, people all around us, maybe they don't voice this, but, you know, the questions in the human soul are things like, does anybody care about me? Does anybody even see me? Our world lacks hope of this, that, that there's a yes to those, those questions. Now, this coronavirus has exposed the fragile foundation of our earthly hopes. Uh, we think of government, science, and, and money. Uh, those are great hopes of, of the world, aren't they? Uh, but they have been no, no uh, help in overcoming this, this virus at this point. Now, God bless those things, and maybe they will help us, and we hope they will uh, help us overcome this virus in the end. But, but don't miss the point. Government, science, money, none of those could stop this virus from spreading. They were all blindsided by it. And if that's the case with the, the coronavirus, well, then what next? Will stymie science shutter government and shake economies? God is showing us that all our earthly hopes, they are fragile, and they cannot offer us gain in death because they are all vulnerable to death. But Christian, we have this unshakable living hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is a hope that stands sure in the face of persecution, disease, and death. And so if we would not be drawn into this gravitational pull of fear, the fear of our age, but remain people of hope, then we must, as Peter says, verse 15, in our hearts honor Christ the Lord is holy. And actually, I like the NIV, the way it puts it here. In our hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. You know, to, to set apart something um, means simply just to, to put it in a special place or, or prominent place. Well, if we're full of fear, uh, you were afraid of something, the reality is that Christ has been misplaced in our hearts. We've made something of this life large and Christ small. And so to set apart Christ as Lord is, is to actively refocus our hearts on the greatness of Jesus. Uh, in my, uh, my side yard, um, I, I occasionally run across molehills. 
And, uh, you know, these little, little critters, uh, you know, burrow underneath my lawn and, and then up pops a little mound of dirt in the grass. Now, you know, we have this saying, don't make a, a mountain out of a molehill. But have you ever thought, how would you actually and literally do that? Well, the only way to turn a molehill into a mountain is to get down on all fours and put your face on the ground next to that, that little mound of dirt so that's the only thing that your eye sees. Now, imagine me doing that in my yard and my, uh, my next-door neighbor, uh, Liberty Walters, and, and her brother Judah uh, come and, and they're standing there watching me, and, and they, what do they say? Pastor, why, why do you have your face in the dirt like that? And I respond, because this molehill is a mountain. Can't you see it? And, of course, they're looking around. They see the mountains you know, that surround the house out, up there, and they're saying, but Pastor White, if you just stand up, you'd see that that's just a tiny little hill and, and not a mountain at all. Now, what a silly illustration, I know. But I'm telling you, we do it all the time in real life. The reason our circumstances seem so big and fearful to us is that we are lying prostrate before them on the ground, letting them alone fill our view. But compared with Jesus Christ, everything in this world is a molehill. Christ is the mountain. And so stand up, stand up in Jesus and see the greatness of who he is and what he's promised. You know, to set apart Christ as Lord is, is a call to dig out the, the promises of God's word, to praise and to thank him for it. But it, it's more than that. It's not just noticing them. We've got to own these promises by applying them in our fearful circumstances. And we, we take these circumstances of ours and we put them in the light of what? The massive sovereignty of our God. And when we do that, well, what results is hope in the heart, a heart pulled along by, by a living hope in the living Lord Jesus. Now, when we are living by, uh, by hope in Christ, uh, you know, this results in some things. And, um, you know, we, we want to do good because we want to reflect Christ. That's, we're back to, to Peter's line of argument here. Uh, and, you know, some people will see those uh, good works and, you know, respond with a thumbs up. Others will, you know, be critical. Um, but Peter indicates what we might call the curiosity of hope. Um, we become a curiosity to others, especially to those who lack hope. You know, people may turn to us and say, how come you're so happy? You know, <laughs> or what, what gives you such hope in these, these times? And Peter says, verse 15, always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. And he says to do it with gentleness and respect. Uh, you are not to be you know, feisty, defensive, uh, you know, or this, this in-your-face kind of harshness, but you know, we reflect our God, uh, who's, who's respectful, who's gentle himself. And so we respond simply, my hope, <laughs> it's Jesus. Let me tell you about him. Helen Rosevere was uh, a missionary doctor in the Congo in, uh, in, I think she was there for about 20 years. Um, and she just died uh, in 2016. She was 91 years old. Um, but during her service, she suffered tremendously for her faith. Uh, she was imprisoned in 1964 during an uprising in the Congo uh, where she was repeatedly uh, beaten and, and raped. But her confidence in, in the worthiness of Christ and, and his promise of salvation, this kept her hope alive. And it kept her resilient and committed to the work even after she was released. Well, when she finally retired, she finished her days uh, in her, uh, uh, her homeland of, of England. But her work was not finished. Uh, one time she was visiting the doctor and she was informed that she had breast cancer. Well, after receiving this news, she was 
passing through the, the lobby of the doctor's office when she, so, she saw uh, on the side uh, this woman uh, who just, her head was down. I mean, she was just super depressed. And Helen Rosevere sensed the Holy Spirit say, go over and speak to this woman. So she went over and uh, asked, ma'am, are, are you okay? Well, this, this woman just blurted out, I've just been told I have cancer and I don't know what I'm going to do. And then she went on and on expressing her hopelessness in the face of, of this diagnosis. Well, Rosevere was able to say, I know. I have cancer too. And this woman noticed that Rosevere was not undone by her diagnosis. And so she asked why. And Rosevere was able to tell this woman the reason for the hope that was in her, that it is Jesus. He is her life. And in time, she was able to lead this woman to faith in Christ. Another time, Rosevere was in a grocery store, her checkout line, and uh, she felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit to speak to the cashier and, and just to say to the young girl, Jesus loves you. Now, this was completely alien to Rosevere. Here she was, this, this proper English woman. She was a, a, a medical doctor. She was not some you know, crazy Christian speaking messages from God in a grocery store. But the Holy Spirit wouldn't let up. And so when she got to the girl to pay for her groceries, she leaned in and she said, young lady, Jesus Christ loves you. And this girl just burst into tears, I mean, on the spot. She was sobbing uncontrollably so much so that she had to take a break. Well, Rosevere got a couple of coffees, and they, they went outside uh, where the girl just opened up about the hopelessness that was filling her life. And then the girl noticed Rosevere, who, who seemed to be hopeful and peaceful, and uh, she asked you know, about it, and, and Rosevere was able to tell her the reason for the hope that was in her, that it is Jesus, and in time was able to lead this young gal to Christ. Now, what I love about these stories is that Rosevere was just being observant where she was planted. She saw people, and she listened to the Holy Spirit, and then responded with the hope that she had in Christ. I love that. I mean, what, what, what a great evangelism uh, method, is it not? I mean, watch people and listen to the Holy Spirit and respond with hope, your hope in Christ. And boy, what a window God may be opening for us in these days, right? I mean, uh, because this world is, is not full of hope right now. And we think, well, if it's not coronavirus, it's going to be something else that takes us down and the world more and more is understanding that, that our go-to saviors, our go-to you know, hope, hopes that we had are, are failing us, and they especially fail us in the face of disease and death. But Christian, you have a hope that this world does not have, but that this world needs. And so in your own life, when the gravitational pull of fear seeks to draw you in, set Christ apart as Lord in your heart. A living hope in Jesus, that is what is going to provide resilience in your life in the face of fear. Set apart Christ as Lord in your, in your hearts and, and then offer yourself to God. Say, Lord, use me as an object of curiosity that others may ask the reason for the hope that is in me, that, that is Christ. And if you're here, you're listening to this message and you do not have a living hope in you. I mean, if you, if you cannot say, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, as I've said before, don't die because you don't have any hope. But there is hope in the world, and it is in Jesus Christ. And I invite you to ask Jesus to be your Savior. Repent of your sin. Call on him. Set your hope on him. He is real. What he has done on the cross is true. He is good, and he will deliver you from fear, even fear of death, and he will bring you into the living hope of life with him forever.
in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Amen. This morning, if you have made that confession, that you have set apart Jesus Christ as Lord, we would love to walk with you in that at Christ Community Church. We are all once sinners now saved by Christ, and we are walking that journey together. In 1858, um, George Duffield wrote this hymn that says, Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. For this day the noise of battle, but the next is the victor's song. And this morning we have a great Savior that we can trust in. And the invitation is there for us to trust in him. It is so sweet.
the faithfulness of our God. Let's sing of that as we close today. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. We wrestle with the sinner's restless life. You lead us by still waters into the sea. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. And nothing can keep us apart. the promises of God today are yes and amen through Jesus Christ, our great hope. We good? Thank you, church, for worshiping with us today. Uh, what a joy to celebrate the hope we have in Jesus Christ, the grace that is ours in him. Uh, may the Lord bless you in your homes. Uh, again, moms, happy Mother's Day to you. May the Lord bless you with the confidence of his love and his presence with you uh, in all your coming and going. Uh, we're in the state of North Carolina here. We're in phase one. Boy, we're looking forward to the day when, when there are people in these pews. Um, we love the Lord, but we, it's so much better to love him and worship him together. And uh, we look forward to that day. But uh, let us now receive the, the blessing of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, may God bless you and keep you. The Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord, turn his face toward you and grant you peace. And he has through Jesus Christ, the living Lord, our living hope. Hallelujah. Blessed are we. Amen.